Ar-Razzaq, the perpetual provider. Person has just been laid off and they're walking out of the meeting with their boss absolutely content. Does that sound impossible? If you wake up safe and sound with good health and enough to get through the day, you're already been given every worldly thing you could ask for. And yet, he continues to give you more. If you want more money, this is the name of Allah that you should use often. Allah calls himself Ar-Razzaq the perpetual provider. And it comes in one place in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَةِ الْمَتِينَ Now, reflecting on the names of Allah as they appear in the Quran is an incredible exercise and a powerful avenue of contemplation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, translating this verse, that He didn't create us because He wants anything from us. We don't benefit Him at all. Allah says, I only created mankind and the jinn except to worship me. I don't want from them food and I don't want from them any provision. And in the hadith of Abu Dhar, the Prophet sallallahu says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh my servants, you won't be able to benefit me to benefit me and you won't be able to harm me to harm me. In fact, if the first of you and the last of you and the jinn of you and the human of you had the most righteous heart, that would increase in my dominion anything. And if the first of you and the last of you and the human of you and the jinn of you had the most wicked heart, that would not take away from my dominion anything. The hadith is in Muslim. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah doesn't benefit from our worship. We don't benefit him and we don't harm him. Allah doesn't want provision from us. Allah says, I'm the one who provides for you. I don't want any provision, nor do I want them to feed me, Allah says. And then in the next verse, he says, Verily, inna Allah huwa razzaq. Allah is the provider. Dhul quwa and al mateen. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna Allah huwa razzaq. Allah is al razzaq. Dhul quwa and al mateen. So Allah mentions his name al razzaq, and then he mentions an attribute, and then he mentions another name. What is the attribute? The attribute is the possessor of strength, dhul quwa. And what is the name? Al-Mateen. And what does Al-Mateen mean? The firm, solid, the unwavering, something that doesn't shake. That's called Mateen. This right here is very, very, very shakable. I can move it out of the frame immediately. But what's behind me is Mateen. The pulpit is Mateen. I can't shake that. It's solid. It doesn't break. It's unwavering. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicating when he pairs his name, Ar-Razaq, with the attribute of strength and Al-Mateen, the name? You see, anytime you and I are looking for a provider, we're always looking for two things. The first is strength, the strength of their ability to provide. And the second thing is their consistency. Your cell phone provider, your internet provider, what do they always advertise? The strength of their network and their consistency. When they're promoting that they have 5G coverage, their network is 5G, what are they saying? They're promoting the strength of their network. When they are promoting their upload speed or their download speed, they're promoting the strength of their provision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah huwa razzaq dhul quwa. He can provide with strength. But there's another important ingredient. Let's say your cell phone provider can provide you with 5G, but the network is really spotty. You get 5G at home, but as soon as you leave your home, you can't get a signal. People don't like blazing fast speeds if you can't connect half the time. We don't like strong connection if it's not reliable, if it's not consistent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about his provision, not only is he strong in his ability to provide, but he is mateen, he is unwavering, he is consistent. He can provide for you tomorrow like he provided for you yesterday. What else does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about this? When you know that Allah is a razzaq, you make decisions based on Allah being your provider and no one else. I know a brother who's an entrepreneur and developed a, a fast growing Instacart company, mashallah, delivering halal and ethnic food all over the country that he's in. And it became very successful and it got to the point where he needed to scale. He needed to bring in investors and those investors would be non-Muslim. And so he was very worried about a question that he was anticipating that he knew was going to come. He's presenting to these non-Muslims. It's time for him to scale this business, this food delivery service. And he knew the question that was going to come is, what about alcohol? What about pork? Obviously, the margins on alcohol are very high. And he spent a lot of time thinking about what he's going to say. Is he going to say no? What happens if he loses out on the investment? And he even thought about what options could he possibly do that might Islamically still be legit? Like, could I bring in a non-Muslim investor to handle the, the alcohol side and their share is the alcohol side? Like, what could he do? Finally, after discussing with his family and they all said no, and when the guy finally met with the investor, the investor asked him the question, what about alcohol? And so our brother, after thinking about it for such a long time, he said, no. And do you know what the investor said when he said no? Okay. And he moved on to the next question. He said, I had built up this thing to be so big in my head, but when I presented it and I simply said no to the investor, the investor moved on, he didn't care. You know why? Because the investor cares about making money. And so if you think your business and you know your market better, if you think that they're going to respond better and our business is gonna grow by you not selling alcohol, then that's fine. And he moved on. But our brother, he said, imagine if out of fear, the imaginary fear, 
of losing out on an investment that I had said yes. I would have been selling alcohol all over the country. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِدُكُمُ الْفَقْ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَةِ Allah says shaitan promises you poverty. He threatens you with poverty and he commands you to do that which is indecent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you forgiveness from him and his bounty. Al Hassan al Basri he said, I read in over 90 places in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed provision and that he secured it. And I read in one place in the Quran that shaitan promises poverty. So we doubted the statement of the truthful in over 90 places and we believed the statement of the liar in one. But I want you to also think about something that it is does not just money. The Prophet وسلم, he outlines in an amazing hadith and it's a hadith honestly that we should memorize. It's a hadith that we should share with our family members, our friends. Rasulullah in the hadith is reported by At-Tirmidhi, he says, Man asbaha minkum aminan fi sirbihi, whoever of you wakes up safe in their dwelling, mu'afan fi badinihi, healthy in their body, yamliku quta yawmihi, they have enough sustenance for the day, fakaannama hizat lahu dunya, as if the entire world is rolled out for them. So what are the blessings that the Prophet وسلم, mentions? In this hadith, there are four blessings. Number Number one, the first one is if you woke up today. If you woke up today, there are billions of people in the graves who would trade places with you right away. It doesn't matter what your state is. Are you healthy? Are you sick? Are you broke? Do you have money? Do you have family? Are you alone? Billions of people would trade places with you. The Prophet ﷺ was once walking by a grave and the hadith was authenticated by Shaykh al-Bani, may Allah have mercy on him. He said to his companions, two rak'ahs that one of you prays without thinking much of it is more beloved to the person in this grave than the rest of your dunya. Everything else that we spend our days and our nights seeking, he says two rak'ahs that you belittle through which you're able to increase in your good deeds is more beloved to the person of this grave. The opportunity to do one more act of goodness is more beloved to them than the entire dunya. So number one, if you woke up away Number two, you are safe. You know, the lack of safety makes the wealthiest people turn into refugees, having to start their lives, pick up their pieces from all over. Number three, healthy in your body. What would you trade your health for? And then number four, if you just have enough sustenance for today, because today is the only day that you've been promised, then it's as if you have the entire world rolled out for you in your pocket. So recognize from this name, our takeaway from a razaq is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate provider, but also that risk is not just money. Risk is way more than just what's in your bank account. Your family is risk, your health is risk, your personality is risk, your friends are risk, your disposition, your cheerfulness is risk, and most importantly, your faith is risk. So I want you to comment with just one risk that you are happy for, that you are thankful for today. Let's inspire each other.